very good question and in the process of novelization i think defamiliarization does happen in the sense that uh, when high art and low art are brought together dialectically right then one defamiliarizes the other right so high art the notions of high art tragedy and the epic and uh the low arts when you put them together both of them seem to be uh defamiliarizing each other right and in the process producing a new genre uh, of novel which seems to be a kind of defamiliarization of the epic right very good very good but i think this is something that we need to look into further you need a deeper reading of bakhtin but it's a very good insight that you have you may want to read bakhtin further to find out uh, and sholokho right slavisky so that you can find actual parallels yeah so i think mansi has a question no sir okay but uh, difference would be uh, slavisky is implying that the authors right writers use this device technique uh, to defamiliarize it's a deliberately done thing but bakhtin seems to be looking at the process of novelization as a social and cultural process rather than an individual act of defamiliarization stavan right but there is definitely a close link and parallel <coughs> any other doubts so if there are no more questions then we can go over to the next essay that is uh, structural analysis of a narrative by swetin todorov right and i think someone was making a presentation on this so who is making no one had anyone volunteered okay okay so what i will do is that uh, because uh, uh, i am not very sure of the dates of the examination i will give you an overview and uh, walk you through that essay and uh, if somebody wants to make a presentation right then you can use this essay and maybe uh, relate it to some literary text as a kind of project and see how you can use structuralist analysis of a short story or a novel so it can be okay okay stavan says that 12th jan was for uh, masters of sec uh, second year okay your dates haven't been declared okay fine but i think let us uh, try this exercise yeah krishna go ahead sir done by mistake sorry okay so what i will do i will give you an overview of this essay and then uh, maybe uh, you can use these to uh, as a kind of research method to analyze a text on your own that can be your presentation 
where you will actually learn application of structuralism uh, to literature, right? Do you think it's a good idea? Yes. Ah, no, nah, maybe. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. So uh, this essay is one of a very good instance. I think Krishna is raising her hand by mistake. Uh, a very good instance of applic uh, how structuralism is not just a theory, but a practice of analysis, right? And how can you use structuralist methodology to study literature, right? So it is a, something of a research method that uh, we are going to approach uh, uh, structuralism as now, right? So <clears throat> that I think that is very important aspect here that you need to keep in mind. Uh, <coughs> yes, we can definitely have a doubt sessions later. Jaldi. What say? We can have doubt sessions and question sessions, yeah. Because if we get time, as Tavan says, that if it is the third sem that's going in for examination and yours is still, you still have some time on your hand, then we can have classes later on, right? Mm. Right? Okay. Uh, so, Svetan Todorov is primarily a Bulgarian theorist who uh, migrated to France and studied there under Rola Barth, uh, one of the leading figures of French structuralism. And uh, uh, Todorov is famous for using structuralist methodology in analysis of literary narrative, producing a field of studies called narratology. So narratology is a very important uh, field of study, which studies uh, all narratives. It may be cinematic narratives, it may be dreams, it may be any story that you tell, it may be a lie that you tell to somebody, right? Or it may be a news report, or it may be anything, all kinds of narratives. It studies these narratives from more or less scientific perspective. And this scientific perspective is what make, very often makes it a kind of controversial uh, approach. Because right from Russian formalism uh, under uh, Boris Eisenbaum and Roman Jakobson, there has been an, a, a kind of tendency to make study of literature scientific, positivist, or overtly empirical. But as you will see in this essay, Stavan, it moves away from positivism and empiricism, very much in Sashurian line. Because Sashur, if you remember, makes a distinction between Lang and Parol, where Parols are the actual texts or words, uh, but they are not the primary uh, object of analysis. They, their analysis of text is to uh, come up with the analysis of Lang. Uh, if you remember that, right? So uh, in some ways, structuralism is also moving away from positivism and empiricism, but that remains a contradiction. And Jacques Derrida in his very famous essay, Structure, Sign and Play, points out how structuralism is also positivist and empirical. It cannot get rid of this attempt. So that is the contradiction in structuralism, which uh, Derrida talks about. But uh, coming back to the question, it tries to become more scientific. And in the essay, <coughs> uh, Todorov tries to address this question uh, in a nutshell, in very brief, briefly, by pointing out <coughs> how uh, on page number, if you have it with you, there are two objections that very often people have when it comes to scientific, uh, uh, considering uh, literary criticism as a scientific endeavor. And those objections 
are uh, what he addresses on page number 2101. So in case you don't have, let me share the screen. Can you see this screen? No, sir. Now? We can. Yes. Right. Yes, so sir. on page 2100, uh, he says in the last paragraph that uh, literary analysis owns much to the modern notion of science. Right. And he sees science as a very important aspect of literary criticism. And uh, uh, going to the next page, he uh, points out the two or three important objections that people have. If uh, uh, you try to make sci literary criticism scientific. Right. So first comes from Henry James, very famous essay that some of you may remember we discussed in TYBA. Right about the art of fiction. And uh, in this essay, Henry James is saying there is actually there is no such thing as plot or uh, dialogue or a character or uh, setting, right? All the elements that we talk about of fiction don't exist because a uh, novel is a living unity, an organism. And once you separate its kidney from lungs, it no longer remains a novel. So the whole aspect of analysis itself is uh, artificial. That is the first objection that Henry James makes against uh, scientific analysis of, uh, 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 of literature. And uh, it is kind of breaking down something into smaller elements. Now, this aspect, this question of methodology is one of the controversial uh, analogies of literary criticism, right? And many people say that uh, if you break down literature into smaller parts for analysis, you are killing it, right? You are murdering literature. But uh, uh, he answers to this uh, uh, objection by saying that this is what we do even in physics and chemistry and biology. And in order to understand uh, a plant, you need to break it down into its various components and see how various components connect and relate to each other to understand how it works. Right. So what we are doing is not an artificial activity, but something that is basic to production of any knowledge. Right. And if you want to study anything and produce knowledge about it, one thing that we basically do is to break it down into its elements, right? And this activity itself is called analysis. So analysis is a natural methodological move that people do in any field, right? And uh, so it is not really artificial. And he goes on to say that uh, 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 comparing novel with a living animal, right? Or a living being itself is a metaphor. Right. Novel is not actually a living being. It's a textual uh, artifact. So considering it as uh, the living being, something which is very romantic, because it's the idea of romantic uh, idea of organic unity, which we discussed in uh, Coleridge. I don't know if anyone remembers the idea of organic unity itself is a metaphorical belief. Right. That's what he says. And that's why uh, to call no novel a living being is a fallacy, logical fallacy. Then he goes on to take on another very important objection to the idea of scientific principles in literary analysis. And he says that science must always be objective while interpretation of literature is always subjective. And he believes that this is a very mistaken belief because uh, uh, every critic will have some element of subjectivity. It is not a fixed thing, but it varies from person to person. Subjectivity is a variable thing. So when you're talking about, say, for example, meter, and you say this is iambic pentameter, you're not making a 
a subjective statement right it is not just because mujhe lagta hai ye it's not like that right so when you are looking at uh, say for example versification or pattern of images in a poem it is not just what you think it is not a personal subjective response to a text right so at the same time even in all other social sciences whether it be economics or psychology there is some element of subjectivity involved so one should not make a big deal out of these things that's his argument so uh, do you have to say anything about that <coughs> anybody has to say anything about these two responses to uh, by todorov to the objection that if you make scientific uh, if you try to make literary criticism scientific uh, that is, these are the problems that you are going to face right and he is uh, responding to them so mm -hmm. so uh, yeah go ahead so sir uh, like uh, todorov talks about like he uh, argues against the objections to make uh, no uh, critical analysis uh, as objective and so, scientific scientific yes yeah, sci scientific scientific mm -hmm. and but the problem is that uh, even like we cannot say that okay this feels like an iambic pentameter so it's an iambic pentameter like that that's an argument but the very Uh, nature of you know what constitutes an iambic pentameter is uh, socio cultural and it is it is not as if we have dis socio cultural is not something that anybody is denying when you say it is scientific for example scientific econo what is economics it is scientific study of human economy and it is social and cultural right yes yes so, so science uh, and social and cultural are not mutually exclusive because you are doing social sciences Uh, so like in a way like you know if we uh, like jumping the queue what pupo says is uh, about the discourse how science is not, not something objective and it is uh, not you know brought out as you know it's like uh, something heaven that, that has come to us and we are doing science and we have discovered science it is it is an invention and science and uh, so stands for history that it it is created by a discourse and hmm. so but then what is but remember uh, the problem with foucault is that when he says that uh, uh, all these discourses disciplinary discourses right of social sciences psychology these are uh, uh, governed by politics or will to power right so rationality or reason or which is the basis of science sciences right is underscored by politics or power when foucault says that right what he is not able to do is that he is not able to come out of his own rationality right he cannot take a place stand outside the field of reason which has marginalized madness say for example he is still using a rationalist discourse which is grounded in enlightenment and that is the Sir, basic then contradiction comes the problem of, then comes the problem of self referentiality that we cannot apply foucault on foucault or butler on butler or postmodernism on postmodernism Hmm. So that, th that is uh, Derrida's objection to Foucault, that uh, he is critiquing all these disciplinary for formations as being underscored by rationality or governed by rationality, which is itself a bourgeois enlightenment capitalist practice. But his own criticism of rationality is itself rational; it is not uh, wild. right so he is not able to come out of what he is criticizing right he stands inside what he is criticizing he is part of he is implicated in the criticism that he is making right so uh if you are going to jump the queue i will jump one more queue right <laughs> so you cannot escape the fact that uh, production of knowledge right is what we are talking about and even if it is political we are just reflecting on ourselves we cannot abandon that project of production of knowledge can we 
should we stop studying literature then no sir that was not my point my point was that the we claimed stop objectivity huh? no my my point was that the claimed objectivity cannot be you know completely objective it, it has no we what, that. how we define subjectivity we and objectivity that. that comes into contention then right so that's what he says that these two things are there in variable quantities so should you then stop doing it that's the whole thing no sir then so when i'm talking of, I'm, talking. I'm, if i'm talking of uh, versification and patterns of images in a poem or if i'm studying a uh, uh, human mind then my whole uh, whole practice of studying human mind is political according to foucault right so what is the alternative then that's the ultimate question yes sir so like but uh, without critique there can be no further alternative given so i'm not saying that no, that, results stop results in aporia. Stop. that results in aporias of all kinds right that becomes a deconstructive moment of aporia when you can't decide so so foucault's objection to objectivity right falls in its own trap it's like nietzsche's objection to rationality or he says that there is no truth language is incapable of uh, revealing truth then uh, what about your own statement isn't it not linguistic you are using language to say that language cannot speak truth which means what you are saying is also not true so wo apoya but the acknowledgement is there then that the every uh truth is not you know like his, his own statement that truth is not a function of sorry every argument or every interpretation of the interpretation of truth but it has a function of power and the power is not the power that you know a makes b something that b would not do in any other case that's not the bureaucratic or democratic power is talking about the will to power that that exists everywhere hmm. so you then that's what levi strauss does right and that is derrida's objection in structure sign and play that uh all you can do is be autocritical autocritic right this is where the whole question of autocritic comes up that you can point out and this is what even todorov is doing he is saying that there is there cannot be any final uh, position but then that we cannot uh, stop producing knowledge about literature either right so this is what he says look at page 2102 he says that uh, there is no social science which is totally free of subjectivity so should you stop doing it then right yes sir and i i agree to this like the very thing i am in support of what todoro is saying that you know it it can be never it can never be free of subjectivity and uh, hmm. there is no point in stopping it right but what defines the subjectivity like uh, there is a hierarchy of what defines subjectivity like subjectivity itself is a product no if you want to go into that tunnel you are digressing from what you are trying to do right so what you are trying to do is develop a kind of poetics for study of narrative which is based in which is using scientific methodology now if you go into this whole debates of philosophical debates of subjectivity ऑब्जेक्टिविटी ऐसी कोई चीज नहीं है है नहीं है क्या है पॉलिटिक्स देन यू आर नॉट डूइंग वॉट यूर स्टेटेड टू डू यू आर गॉन ऑफ इन टू सम अदर टनल एज वी हैव जस्ट नाउ राइट तो आपकी गाड़ी कहीं और निकल जाती है तो उस टनल में जाना है या नहीं उस टनल में हम बहुत बार जा चुके हैं राइट राइट सो ओके and he calls this uh, scientific study of literature poetics following uh, aristotle right and so poetics has two meanings one that it is uh, a study of literature principles of literature what makes literature literary on the other hand it is also something that is implied in all literary texts that particular literary text is based on particular poetics shastra right so it has got two meanings but he is not talking about that here okay then he goes to uh, before he comes to this whole scientific thing 
he has made a very important distinction between he is using the distinctions made by uh, uh, Rene Velek, right, about intrinsic and extrinsic approach to literature. By intrinsic, Rene Velek means that you are concerned with the elements inside the text, the symbols, words on the page, uh, relation between various words on the page in particular text, like a poem. A particular poem is made up of. So most of practical criticism is a kind of intrinsic analysis of literature. Extrinsic means you are studying literature as revealing some other thing, like psychological or psychoanalytical approach reveals literature as, <coughs> as a embodying a structure which is outside of the text, which is a social cultural structure, like a structure of human mind or a structure of human psyche or political or cultural ideological structures, right? As Marxism tries to do. So these are approaches are called extrinsic approaches. So there are two approaches to study of literature according to Rene Velek. One is intrinsic, which is like analysis of a text in itself, right? And other is extrinsic, where you're studying this text as uh, what it tells us about larger social cultural structures, right? Uh, and this distinction is at the heart of uh, new criticism. How many of you have heard of new criticism? So what is new criticism? Can someone tell me? Sir, hmm. so is it related to reader's response theory? No. So in new criticism, only text is what uh, a critic should study. And uh, he should not focus on writer's uh, historical background. And he should not uh, think of why uh, such uh, work is written by the writer. Okay, but that is what new critics do, right? What you are saying is about what new critics are doing. But what is new criticism? Sir, new critic this on text. Sir, it no, talks what? about sir, it talks about paraphrasing of uh, text, like uh, uh, <clears throat> describing a text in in a detailed manner. Like new new critics uh, read, uh, they have close reading about the text, like they. Con like, concentrate okay, more on text, sir. No, Krishna and Divya, both of you are telling me what they are doing. Barabar hai. Unki method kya hai, ye bata rahe ho aap. Magar kaun, kisko new critics kaha jata hai? Aisa mein pooch raha hu. Who are new critics? Who are associated with the school of new criticism? <laughs> this like, is tautological. And so, oh, so, uh, uh, new so uh, it goes on in circle. New critics con it uh, new critic school ke saath jude hue log hai. So new critic school con si school hai? Is kis school ko new critics kaha jata hai? Stavan says Elliot was one. No. Maybe it's connected with formalism. I mean. It is uh, connected with formalism, right? Absolutely. But I am asking you, which school is called new criticism? No. Krishna says Arnold. No. A school which moves away from the historical and contextual study of a particular work. But that is again their methodology and belief, right? Unki ideas bata rahe ho And you are right. जो दिव्या ने बताया जो कृष्णा ने बताया सोफिया ने बताया ये आइडिया सही है आपके मगर मैं पूछ रहा हूं किन कौन से स्कूल को न्यू क्रिटिसिज्म कहा जाता है यस जॉन को रैंसम इज न्यू क्रिटिक क्लियंत ब्रुक्स आई रिचर्ड्स इज नॉट न्यू क्रिटिक अब आप उनके नाम बताने लगे So you told me about basic tenets of new criticism. You told me about the names. I'm asking you, who are the, uh, how, how do you define new critic? How do you identify this school? 
Okay, new criticism is old criticism, right? Today, 100 years old. So first thing you have to get out of your mind that new criticism is anything new. Pehli baat ye. It was new when it started out, right? 100 years ago. And new criticism is largely a school of critics associated with American South, right? Not South America, American South. And those critics and American South, as you may be aware, was largely agrarian and uh, agriculture based as against North America, which was largely industrialized. And in South, there was uh, a tendency to continue with slavery. While the North was being industrialized, they opposed slavery. So there was a clash between North and the South of America. It was called the Civil War, led by Abraham Lincoln. I don't know if you studied To Kill a Mockingbird. Did you study anyone? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So these scholars of American South uh, like John Crow Ransom, like Alan Tate, like Clint Brooks, like uh, Mon Monsro Beardsley, like uh, Wimsat K. Wimsat. These people tried to, these are American scholars, right? And they are basing their ideas from writings of I.A. Richards, T.S. Eliot and F.R. Lewis, who are called precursors to new criticism, right? Yes, sir, next slide may I exam me. Are you trying to, how many of you are interested in attempting net slate exam? <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, these people, this school of poets, the critics, right, uh, are defined by their certain beliefs. First is that text is the object of analysis, a particular specific text, right? And so this is a kind of intrinsic approach to criticism. That means they are in, interested in analysis of specific poems and uh, plays, right? So this is a kind of practical criticism. And they are interested in the structure of a specific text. Uh, like uh, uh, they are interested in uh, irony as a principle of structure. They are interested in paradox, language of paradox that poem is. They are interested in how uh, 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 words are connected to each other, right? And the metaphor that very often they use comes from uh, uh, the phrase, the verbal icon, right? That is the name of the book by John Crow Ran uh, Ransom or Clint Brooks. I I forgot, but uh, they are called new critics because they believe that the earlier attempts at literary criticism were haphazard and, and amateurish and uh, undisciplined. So they want to put literary study or literary criticism on more scientific basis, very much like Russian formalism and Russian formalism is happening in Russia. New criticism is happening in America, right? So Russian formalism be formalism hai, or new criticism be formalism hai, magar wo American formalism hai, right? The formalist approach uh, in America till 1950s, late 50s is called new criticism. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. And uh, uh, very important uh, text in that is called Intentional Fallacy by Wimzat K. Wimzat and Monsro Beardsley. And they argue that you should, critics should not be concerned with intentions or subjective states of the author. Right? Uh, when you are judging a pudding, you are studying pudding as it is rather than expression of the cook's soul or mind. So they are attacking the romantic uh, literary criticism, which believes that literature is expression of human personality. And they go on to point out that these intentions are neither available nor necessary. And poets very often lie 
about their intentions and uh, to interpret that poem you need not look at authors uh, what is going on in the mind of the author and that is called intentional fallacy right they see text as a public property belonging to language rather than belonging to authors right so in some sense it is a beginning of the argument of the death of the author right which rolla barth would then use structuralism to talk about it but why did we discuss all this yes affective fallacy and affective fallacy according to these scholars is that uh, you evaluate a poem on basis of your emotional response that means ek poem dekh ke mujhe bahut rona aaya the ye poem bahut achhi hai ab this is a subjective response right and uh, if it is a subjective response it has a very little validity because aapko rona hai iska matlab ye nahi ki baju wale ko bhi rona aayega baju wala has raha hoga right so that is not a, a critical response so they focus on text as a text right text as a thing in itself words on the page become the object of explication the text that is close reading of the text close reading is some phrase somebody used here that is the key methodological move in uh new criticism kantian or aristotelianism tumhe kya lagta hai stavan sir if we consider the subset it is more of aristotelian because the insistence is on objectivity right? yes like uh, the- what is it talks about subjective because thing in itself i thought it would be uh, somehow kantian but uh, when it talks point. about in fact in fact there is an essay by john crow ransom called uh, ontology of a poem right poem in itself poem as a thing right yes sir okay so why are we discussing this is because he is saying that intrinsic criticism uh rene velek is talking about an example that is that of uh, new criticism right structuralism is similar but not the same it has uh, it has uh, key differences from new criticism right and he says that though the close analysis of text is important the text itself is seen as part of larger structure right abstract structure called the lang remember right so it is intrinsic it is descriptive but at the same time it is not new criticism like thing right and this is what he tries to elaborate in the beginning of his essay this is something that you may want to look at again okay so here on pa- first page that is 2099 can you see the screen Yes, yes sir. sir and you can see that the uh, very good essays like this explain the, what entire essay is in the first paragraph mai kya karna chahta hu pure essay mein right he says that i will uh, explain first i will give an abstract description of what i conceive to be structural approach to literature then this approach will be illustrated by concrete problem that of narrative and specifically that of plot the example will be taken from the decameron by boccaccio the 14th century great uh, italian writer finally i attempt to make several conclusions about the nature of narrative from the principle of its analysis right and he goes on to make theoretical and descriptive attitude as a distinction right by theoretical you mean your focus is on the larger uh, lang rather than a specific text which means that what you are saying about a poem or a novel or a short story is applicable to larger uh, body of discourse like novel right so his analysis of a single novel he will help us to understand the novel as a form i hope you get what i am saying theoretical ka matlab kya hai right you are not speaking 
though you are speaking of specific text you are drawing theoretical conclusions about the genre itself right by theoretical you mean more generalized so there is more generalized knowledge that you are producing from structural analysis right work will be considered as the manifestation manifestation of abstract structures merely one of its possible realization the understanding of that structure will be the real goal of structural analysis this is what structuralism is agar aapko puche structuralism kya hai to ye structuralism hai ye iski vyakhya hai and structure has a logical rather than spatial significance that means it's about logic of the narrative or text rather than its space so structure yani building ka structure aise nahi hai i hope you get what i'm saying sir can you repeat that part what about the definition of uh, structuralism this definition of structuralism that you gave us right now logical rather than spatial yes sir I can you repeat that it's given by todoro uh, like that what todoro given read you read this <laughs> read out sir where is it okay. i'm finding that maine screen share kar raha hu dikh raha hai na samne pehle page pe second paragraph पहले पेज का पहला पैराग्राफ इट्स विजिबल दैट इज़ अ साइन ऑफ़ गुड राइट टू टू टेल एवरीथिंग ऑल वन कैन कंट्रास्ट नेचर ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर एनालिसिस विल बी एसेंशियली थियोरेटिकल एंड नॉन डिस्क्रिप्टिव इन अदर वर्ड ऑफ अच अटडी विल नेवर बी दिप्शन ऑफ अ कॉन्क्रीट वर्क द वर्क विल बी कंसिडर्ड as the manifestation of an abstract structure merely one of its possible realizations and understanding of that structure will be the real goal of structural analysis so the term structure has in this case a logical rather than okay spatial significance any doubts about this no sir no i got it i got it sir hmm. sir if it is an abstract analysis then everybody have their own interpretations right no apple falls down not goes up because of gravity now is that a subjective analysis it is abstract Sorry. right concrete mein kya dikh raha hai aapko sirf apple gir raha hai niche dikh raha hai na yes sir so is it a subjective conclusion newton ko aise laga ki gravity ki wajah se gir raha hai aapko lagta hai bhagwan ne feka hai aisa hai <laughs> yes sir if something is abstract does not make it subjective So yes. it all boils down to the question of language then and the shared meanings does it yes if i call no. down is up and up is down then apple falls up <laughs> so like that's a very basic all your again jumping the queue to hamesha ek jo agar main algebra padha raha hu to tu calculus pe chala jata hai tera problem ye hai to algebra mein rehna seekh छाएंगे हम कैलकुलस में राइट सो यस सर तेरे को जो पढ़ाया जा रहा है वो छोड़ के तू कहीं और चला जाता है तो तेरे को पकड़ के डी टेबल एस कर रहा हूं ओके ओके बट या and other uh, opposition which he talks what he means by non descriptive is the aim of structural analysis is not to describe a poem which is the objective of new criticism right the aim of structuralism is to describe the abstract structure which produces this kind of specific parables or texts so your object of study of structuralism is not parable but land ये ये उसका फंडा है स्ट्रक्चरलिज्म का यानी अगर वो फैशन पढ़ रहे हैं फैशन का स्टडी कर रहे हैं तो इंडिविजुअल फैशन हैबिट इज नॉट द प्राइमरी एम ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरल एनालिसिस ऑफ फैशन 
they want to study the grammar which produces the norms and the codes that people have internalized which produces a particular kind of dressing for example the rule of matching or rule of contrast right that underlies selection of your clothes or association of color with mood say for example to ye focus hota hai padhne ka to use lang kehte hain i hope you are clear so i have not... a question yeah uh, but uh, like if the parole changes hmm. uh, as it does always then doesn't even the you know the very set conventions change the lang itself starts to change and that is the answer you will find in this essay it doesn't so it's essentialized somehow Wait, to dekh to le pehle hold Take on to your horse hold your horse okay so he goes on to say that his approach is different from both intrinsic and extrinsic right uh when marxists or psychoanalysts deal with the work of literature they are not interested in knowledge of the work itself but in understanding of the abstract structure social or psychic which manifests itself through that work right this is called the extrinsic approach and it is theoretical on the other hand a new critic whose approach is obviously internal and he calls it imaginary see new critics jaisi koi cheez hai nahi use batana chahta hai wo will have no go goal other than understanding of the work itself the result of this effort will be a paraphrase of the work which is supposed to reveal the meaning better than the work itself structural analysis differs from both these attitudes we are satisfied neither by pure description of the work nor by its interpretation in terms that are psychological or sociological or philosophical in other words structural analysis coincides in its basic tenets with theory with poetics of literature its object is the literary discourse rather than the work of literature literature that is virtual rather than real such analysis no longer to articulate or paraphrase a rational resume of the concrete work but to propose a theory of the structure and operation of literary discourse okay any questions so far and then he also says that uh, uh, this does not deny relation between literature and other homologous homogeneous series like philosophy or social life it is rather a question of establishing a hierarchy literature must be understood as in its specificity as literature literature qua literature right before we seek to determine its relation to anything else so before we try to examine the relationship between literature and sociology or society or culture we should know what is literature as literature that is his argument okay so ye theoretical discussion ho gaya barabar hai now he gives practical example and for that he has selected five stories from decameron would somebody want to read this five stories ke plot discuss kar raha hai wo i want somebody to read this five plots who will do that who will do who will read this five plots uh sir may i yes ye wala a monk introduces a girl ये पहली स्टोरी है। या। अ मंक इंट्रोड्यूसेस अ यंग गर्ल इनटू हिज सेल एंड मेक्स लव टू हर। द एबोट डिटेक्स दिस मिसबिहेवियर एंड प्लान्स टू पनिश हिम सीवियरली। बट द मंक लर्न्स ऑफ द एबोट्स डिस्कवरी एंड लेज अ ट्रैप फॉर हिम बाय लिविंग हिज सेल। द एबोट गोस इन एंड सकंस टू द चार्म ऑफ द गर्ल व्हाइल द मंक ट्राइज हिज टर्न एट वाचिंग एट at the end when about intends to punish him the monk points out that he has just committed the same sin result the monk is not punished uh wait a minute isabella a young a young nun is with her lover in her cell 
Upon discovering this, the other nuns become jealous and go to wake up the abbess and have Isabetta punished. But the abbess was in bed and abbot. Um, because she has to come out quickly, she puts and puts the undershorts of the abbot on her head instead of her coif. Isabetta is led into the church as abbess begins to um, So it's not visible further. Okay. Now? Can you see it uh, now? Yes, sir. Abbess begins to lecture her. Isabetta notices the garment on her head. She brings this evidence to everyone's attention and thus escapes punishment. Per Peronella receives her lover while her husband, a poor mason, is absent. Absent, but one day he comes home early. Peronella hides the lover in a cask. When the husband comes in, she tells him that somebody wanted to buy the cask and that this somebody is now in the process of examining it. The husband believes her and is delighted with the sale. The lover pays and lives with the cask. A married woman meets her lover every night in the fam family's country house, where she is usually alone. But one night, the husband returns from the town. The lover has not come yet. He arrives a little later and knocks at the door. The wife asserts that this is a ghost who comes to annoy her every night and must be exercised. The husband pronounces the formula which the wife has improvised. The lover figures out the situation and leaves, leaves with the ingenuity of his mistress it is easy to recognize that these four plots and there are many others like them in decameron have something in common in order to express that i shall use a schematic formulation which retains only the common elements of this plot the sign will indicate a relationship of entailment between two actions So I yes, have to read further ahead. all this. Yeah, yeah, okay. just read the next few lines. X violates Y. Or X, sorry, X violates a law. Y must punish X. X tries to avoid being punished. Y violates a law. Y believes that X is not violating the law. Y does not punish X. Right. So this is the underlying structure of the plot that has produced these four stories. Right. This is the grammar that uh, 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 Todorov has come out with. So this schematic representation that you see is the structure, and this, all these stories were randomly selected. Pehle paach kahaniya. Par sabhi paach kahaniyon mein ye commonality hai plot ke structure mein. That X violates a law, then Y must punish X. Then X tries to avoid getting punished. And then Y is uh, avoiding the law. Or Y believes that X is not violating the law. And then Y does not punish X. This is the underlying, uh, uh, what should I say, grammar of the narrative. This is the structure. While all each each parols, each stories, each text is a manifestation or derivation of this structure. So this is structuralist analysis of the narrative. Anyone has to say something about this? And he says that ye jo pura sequence hai, schema, X violates a law, Y must, is like a sentence or a clause. So minimal schema of the plot can be represented as a sentence almost or a clause. Where X and Y are like nouns. Right? And this violates a law and these are verbs. So basically, this is a syntagmatic representation of a story, plot, plot of that story.
एंड देर इज ऑल्सो कैटेगरी ऑफ मोडैलिटी मोडैलिटी यानी मूड मूड यानी दिस मस्ट हैपन दैट मस्ट हैपन एक्स वायलेट्स लॉ देन वाई मस्ट पनिश एक्स राइट सो दिस इज कॉमन टू ऑल द स्टोरीज देखो monk uh, gets a girl into his cell and makes love and abbot detects that and that's why abbot must punish the monk right and then x tries to ex uh, uh, avoid being punished monk tries to avoid getting punished so then what does he do why violates the law he abbot and abbot khud hi crime kar deta hai Why goes in the room and he may, <laughs> succumbs to the charm of the girl, and monk now is watching. Yani police ka video nikal na hai na vese wo. Same is something that you find in other story. Isabella, Isabetta is another nun, and in her uh, cell she has got a lover. Now other nuns become jealous and they complain to the. एबेस पर उस टाइम पे एबेस होती है शी हैज शी इज इन बेड विद एन एबॉट दिस हेज स्टार्टेड साउंडिंग लाइक टीवी सीरियल नहीं एंड वाइल कमिंग आउट शी पुट्स अंडर शॉर्ट ऑफ द एबॉट ऑन हर हेड एंड दैट्स हाउ वाई कैन नॉट पनिश एक्स एंड वाई बिलीव दैट एक्स इज नॉट वाई Violating why cannot be punished. So this uh, schema ta is applicable to all the four stories. So how is it theoretical? Because it is not specific to the text. It is a kind of level of generalization which is of higher order. Right? It's kind of uh, inductive generalization. Have you heard of inductive method? deductive and inductive have you heard of this phrase terms before research method mein ha na yes sir so what have you heard of that smith like uh, deductive reasoning does not involve like you know uh on the spot observation or anything it's just based on one person's ideas like uh, like at the example in our undergrad of uh, socrates like socrates is a man man is mortal socrates is mortal correct right. kind of like that and for uh, induction we can have uh, let's say uh, uh, i don't know um, we can just go around and look at like actually going to the people and observing whether they are man or not or whether they are dressing as man and such something right we discussed that when we were discussing kant right yes sir okay so yes, by looking at this five stories you did uh, you inductively discover the structure which is common to both and that can be represented schematically and this methodology is very similar to vladimir props very famous essay called uh, uh, morphology of a folk tale that's a very famous uh, book by vladimir prop where he discovers the morphology of all folk tales folk tale ke analysis karke usne is type ka schematic banaya hai okay so then he proceeds to draw even more general conclusions like there is uh, equilibrium here there is disequilibrium and there is another kind of equilibrium that is how a plot moves in time right that is another uh, uh, conclusion that he draws so this is the poetics of a plot
so that's an overview of the essay so what you will do is now read this and make a presentation in the next class uh where you will use it on some other stories maybe folk tales pad sakte ho jo aapne suni hai bachpan mein koi bhi panch folk tales how many of you have heard some stories folk tales i have right so uh, write them down jo aapne likhi aapne suni hui hai bachpan se internet se chori ki hui nahi ya kitab mein se li hui nahi bachpan mein aapko jo sunaya hai wo teen char likh lo smith will you do that okay sir and then try to find the grammar of its plot like todorov has done right so instead of this five stories from bocaccio you are using the four or five stories that you have heard or you can ask your grandparents if they are around for your parents chalega yes no maybe we'll try okay anything you have to ask questions queries krishna you have to say something no sir okay so all of you can read that essay and we can discuss it in the next class okay then so we stop for today right and we meet uh, in on thursday as usual right and smith will make a presentation um of the stories no hmm of the stories right i i can't hear you clearly smith of the stories hmm analysis of the stories and if you can't find okay. uh, five folk tales that you have heard then koi bhi panch folk tales jo aapko pasand hai leke aao panchakat okay, mein se ya isap isap mein se ya whatever whatever you like okay yeah okay so see you on thursday then